Hi, welcome to Create with Lori. I'm Lori and today we're going to create some decorative garden stones. We're going to use an acrylic pouring method and for that you're going to need a few different things. You're going to need some acrylic paints. Any kind will do. The liquid work better than the paste kind that comes in a tube for this because it's liquid and it pours more easily. So you want paint, acrylic paints. You also want something to paint on. I'm using some nice garden flat, or I'm sorry, river, some flat river stones of different sizes. You want them to be fairly smooth and not all full of holes. And you don't want to use a real porous stone. Like pumice stone has a lot of holes in it. The paint won't pour smoothly. It'll just drop into those crevices. So um, flat and smooth stones. And also you want them to be clean and dry. So wash your rocks. Let them dry and then they'll be ready to use. You're going to need a surface to paint on. I'm using this old baking rack that I have fixed outside a disposable tin foil cake pan. That'll help catch any of the um, drips once you pour the acrylic paint. You can also take a cup and set it upside down on your surface or inside. I recommend using something that will catch the paint. You can turn a cup upside down and then you can set your rock on top of it. You just want to make sure that the rock is bigger than the bottom of the cup. Okay? You're going to need something to stir your paints with. I use chopsticks. And you're going to need glue. You can really use any kind of Elmer's type glue. Elmer's glue all works really well. I don't have that, so I'm using school glue. Just plain old basic white school glue. I've got white. I've also got some clear. I'm gonna, we're gonna do some experimenting and see how it works with clear school glue. Because I'm using white washable school glue, your paint on your rock will wash off. So if you're using school glue, you're gonna want some kind of clear coat spray so that when it rains, your paints don't all wash off the rocks, unless you want your paint to wash off the rocks. Um, but before you put them out, pardon me, before you put your rocks out in the garden, you're gonna to wanna to spray them with some clear coat, okay? And we'll cover that a little bit later in the video. As always, newspaper to protect your surfaces. You're gonna need some water so you can get the right consistency and something to paint or something to stir your paints in. Got these little cups, one for each color. Also broken chopsticks for stirring, and then a larger cup to layer the paints before we do the pouring. Okay, so I will put up. I'll put up the list of what you need. I'll let you go gather your materials. I'll set up my work my workspace, and I'll meet you back here, and we will make some garden stones. Okay, so we're back. Our first step for this is going to be mixing up our paints to get them ready to pour. Make sure you shake your paints up. And we're gonna mix our paint in equal amounts with the glue. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be as close as you can get it. So I will start with the green. You're gonna squeeze out some paint. and then you're gonna add glue. And I'm gonna take the top right off of this. You wanna make sure that you have pretty much the same amount of paint and glue. Okay. And then we're gonna add water, about half as much water as you have either paint or glue. And this is kind of an eyeballing it as you mix. So we're going to start with just a little bit and then stir it up. And what you want is kind of pancake batter consistency. You don't want it to be real runny because then they'll, all the colors will blend together and you'll just have a mess. But you also don't want it too thick because you do want it to be able to pour. So you see, it's kind of like pancake batter. And make sure you've got it stirred up nice. 
okay? And then set that aside and we'll do that again for the next color. Shake up your paint. And you can use whatever colors you want. I'm using green, blue, red, white, and I have some purple too. So let's do paint and glue. I find it easier to pour paint out of these little bottles. So what I do is just keep refilling the little bottles from the giant jug that I have that I showed you earlier. Make sure we're getting the tops back on. Okay, so we've got our paint and our glue. We're going to add a little bit of water. Okay, about half as much paint or half as much water as you have either paint or glue. So if you have a tablespoon of paint and a tablespoon of glue, you want about a half a tablespoon of water. It will also vary depending on what kind of glue you have. If you have Elmer's glue all, that's a little thinner than Elmer's school glue, so you don't need quite as much water. Okay, and we're stirring that up. All right. And it's kind of like pancake batter. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these stirred up and then I'll show you how to layer your paints to do them all right. Stirring up the last one. Give them all a nice good stir. Make sure everything's blended well. I used the clear glue on the white and the blue just to see if we get a difference. And then once you've got them all stirred up, you can, you can toss your stir sticks. You won't need those again. Because from here on out, we're just gonna be pouring. Now, it's not a bad idea if you see in your paint cups, lots of little bubbles to let your paint sit for 10, 15 minutes and let some of those bubbles come out. Otherwise you might have bubbles on your pour, which could be pretty, but it might not be the look you're looking for. Okay. So we've got our paints set those aside just in case we need them. Now we have another cup that we're going to pour our paints into and kind of layer them. So I'm going to start and you can do this in any order that you want. I'm going to start by pouring in a little bit of white. If we were doing this on a canvas, these cups would be much more full. We would have a lot more paint. But because our canvas is actually just this little, these little rocks, we don't need that much. So, and then I'm going to pour on some blue. And you're not mixing them. You're just pouring them on top. And some red. And some green. Okay, see how it's kind of just layering? They're thick enough that they're not going to just blend together. There's going to be some differences. And you can do this in any order that you want. We'll add a little more blue. We'll do another layer of white. And then anyone who knows me knows purple is my favorite color. We'll finish it with some more purple. Now. You don't mix it together, but take your take a stir stick and just do a figure eight. Okay, that's it. That's all you do. All right. So we've got our paints. Move this a little closer. We've got our rock. It's nice and smooth. It's clean. It's dry. So now. We pour. And then you just let it drip. I still have paint left in my cup, so I'm going to take this one. And you'll see it's different. You can also add more if you want. So I'm going to do 
this. Now, if you get down to the end of your paint and you see that it's not flowing off, you can do this, you can tilt it. This is why we have something underneath to catch it. And you'll see that in the bottom of the pan, there's paint gathering. That is not going to go to waste. I will show you what we're gonna do with that. Aren't those pretty? Okay. We're gonna let those set and drip for a little bit. We don't wanna move it. Let's see, I have one more little rock that I can possibly get the last of the paint out of. normally be wearing gloves when I do this although it's acrylic and it is washable that's one of the reasons for using acrylics Let me tilt it and we're just gonna let it Okay, so we're gonna let those set. And we're gonna let those continue to drip until they're not actively running off. I'm gonna go wash my hands. I will meet you back here in just a minute and I'll show you what we're gonna do with the paint that's in the bottom okay. of the pan. So our rocks have actively stopped running paint off of them. They're just kind of dripping a little bit. So I've set them aside and we're gonna let them dry. It's not a bad idea to move them every once in a while so they don't dry and stick to the drying rack that you or the cooling rack that that i've used if, you, if you've got them on a cup it's not a bad idea also to move them around that way the paint doesn't dry and stick it and then you've got another mess after but we've got all this paint in the bottom of our pan with nothing to do so we're going to take another rock and just do that and then lift it up and you'll have a different kind of a swirl. And you can do, this one is a little bit messier. Okay. You see? And just kind of tip it in to the paint so that you've got a pretty swirl pattern. You are going to get paint on your hands while you're doing this, but it's acrylic and the glue is washable. So might as well just, okay. So then there we have, there's a little spot there. So we'll take a little bit of paint and dab it on. If there's a spot that you don't particularly like, or you want a different color on it, just do that and then set that over here to dry. And you can continue doing that depending on the size rocks that you have um, until you've used up all this paint. All right, I'm gonna go wash my hands. I will be right back and we'll talk about how we're finishing them. All right, so I've used up the rest of my paints. Some of them are a little more marbled than others. Some of the dip ones didn't come out quite the same, but that's okay because every rock is going to look different and um, they're all going to be beautiful. So now what we do is we wait. We have to let them dry completely. On a warm sunny day, you can set them out in the sun and they'll dry pretty quickly. Um, today I'm just going to let them sit on my table and dry and drip until they're completely done. And then I'll show you 
um, how we seal them to make them stay like this even when they're out in the garden in a rainstorm. Okay? And here they are, all ready to be put out into the garden. Well, almost ready to be put out into the garden. But didn't they come out pretty? I think this one's my favorite. Nice swirl patterns. This is the first one I did in the dip, and you can see how it kind of got muddy and mushed together. It's still kind of pretty. So there we have beautiful garden rocks. Now, if you're going to put them outside, which I recommend because they're absolutely beautiful and they look great in the sunshine, I do recommend sealing them. You can pick, you can use any kind of um, waterproof paint, any kind of, it just clear coat will do. You want a, a good two coats on it. Let it dry completely in between and then let it dry for a good 24 hours before you actually put them outside. And an important thing to remember is to get the back where the paint ends and the rock begins. Water will get up under there and it'll work its way out through the paint. We used waterproof or we used washable glue and acrylic paints and eventually those will wash away in the rain if we don't seal them. Okay. I hope you enjoyed today's craft. I am Lori. This has been Create with Lori. I'm the teen librarian at Manlius Library. You can find me here on the Manlius Library YouTube page every Thursday at four o'clock. Next week we will be making DIY stress balls. You'll need a balloon, some rice, and an empty water bottle. I hope you'll join me. Have a great weekend. Happy Mother's Day, and I'll see you next week.